Hello everybody, this is Carmen Killed the Cat, and welcome to your 25th Lua 5.2 tutorial. So in this video we're just going to be tying up some loose ends and going over the last few functions and constants that Lua has to offer. And after this we'll be moving on to the C library. So you can see here this is going to kind of be similar to the math library tutorial where I just have a bunch of functions listed out and I'll explain each one. However, these functions are a bit more complicated than the math library ones, so I will have to go into a bit more detail in each one. So, let's get started. So, the first function is assert, and if you're familiar with pretty much any other imperative programming language, you'll know what this does. Uh, basically, it takes two arguments. The first is a condition, and the second is an error message. And a condition is just any, any uh, statement that returns true or false. So anything that you could put in an if statement. So in assert, if this condition is true, then assert just returns all the arguments, so it would return true, and then whatever this error message is. And then also you could just keep stacking on arguments here, and it would return those. Uh, they don't have anything to do with the actual execution of this statement. But if the function is false, then it returns, or it doesn't return anything, it uh, creates an error message with, or it creates an error with whatever message you give it. So if we try to run this program, because we have uh, false here, then we get program lua52.exe started in blah 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 blah. Here it is. So the file path and then lua at line one, oh no, which is the error message we have here. So if you give us a sort of false argument, it will create an error. But if we give it true and we print it out, there we go. And run it, we get true. Oh no, if we were to pass a 1 in this, it would also return 1. And you can pass as many arguments as you want. So that's assert. It's useful for testing conditions and any kind of, say, initialization functions that would return either true or false. The next function is called error. And this function is pretty much the exact same as print, except instead of printing to the error stream, or the uh, uh, standard output stream, it prints to the standard error stream. So this basically just creates an error. So uh, if we run this, you can see we get an error here. So we get the printout from assert, true and oh no. And then we get another error at Lua line 3, which is where this is. And we get program failed. Oh yeah, uh, you may notice I finally found out how to make the console text bigger conveniently in the last tutorial where we'll be using a zero brain, or at least using it extensively. So finally figured out how to do it. Not much help though. So that's error. Basically just creates an error. So whenever you see an error from a Lua function, that's the function that's being called. The next function, you can see it buried in here, is the next function. And basically you give this a table and you give it an index and it returns the numerical index after the index you give it. So uh, let's actually just comment out error here so we can see the rest of the output. So if we run this, uh, we can ignore the oop, we can ignore the first thing because it's just the uh, assert print, and then we get three and three. So we gave next the t table which we create here, and then we give it index two. So we're looking at the t table at the index after index two, which is obviously three, and the value of that is three. So we get three three. Just to make this a bit more clear, we can change this to four, and we get three four. So uh, function's not very useful. You could just uh, this would be an equivalent statement, like a completely equivalent statement. So t at, uh, say you had a variable that, uh, or we'll just do this, 2 plus 1. Um, so just, you could say 2 is a variable, so this is literally the exact same thing as the next function, so not a very useful function, but it's there, so we might as well go over it. The next function is uh, pcall. And what this function does, uh, pcall stands for protected call. It calls whatever function you give as the first argument in protected mode. So what this means is that instead of an error call, so like a call to this function here, creating an error, uh, the error is just returned uh, from the pcall function. So if we run this now, you can see we get true and 10. So uh, if there's no error in the function, then the pcall function returns true as a uh, an error code that just means no errors happened and then it returns all the return values of the function so in this case 10 however if we swap the comments here and we created an error and ran this we get false 
and then we get our error message here and I just put X in as the error message so uh, just to show you that it's actually creating the error message we can say X plus 1 and we get 11 as our error message so uh, you can see that instead of actually creating an error the error message was just printed out and the program continues to run so if you ever have a function that may or is likely to cause an error that you and you don't want that error to end the program call it with pcall these next four functions, uh, I didn't create examples for them, I'll just go over them because uh, it would be a lot of code to make examples for pretty simple functions. So the functions are raw equal, raw get, raw length, and raw set. Uh, and basically these are just saying do the operations that it gives after the raw on tables and don't use metatables. So uh, you can see I have t as the first arguments for most of these and that stands for table so raw equal is saying compare t1 and t2 and ignore both of their meta tables so say t1 had some special meta table that uh, gave some special protocol for how to compare it to another table uh, if you use raw equal it will ignore that meta table same with raw get if the the t stands for table i stands for index and if you had a uh, and underscore underscore index meta table set for t uh, that would be ignored and you would just get t at position i raw length is the underscore underscore length meta table that would be ignored and you just get the size of table t and raw set is the same as raw get but for the underscore underscore new index meta table so basically all these functions are just saying uh, do the operation that uh, you're or do this operation and ignore all meta tables so that can be useful if you just want to do raw table operations instead of treating it as a either a table with meta tables or a class. So this next function is two number, and this just converts a string into a number. So it takes two arguments, or it can take one argument. The second one's optional. Uh, if you just give it one argument, let's get rid of our first one and change this. If you give it one argument, it'll just convert this, or try to convert the string into a base 10 number. So if we run this, we, you see we get 10. And say we add an i after it and tried to run it, we get nil because it failed to convert the string into a number. So it just converts whatever string you give it into a number, and if it fails, it returns nil. But you can also give it a number in a different base, and then as a second parameter, tell it what base the number's in, and then it'll convert to that. So uh, this this is hexadecimal, and you could even say base 26. So uh, 26 is the highest base you can go. Cause actually, no, it'd be 36. 36, because there are only uh, 26 letters in the alphabet to represent the next 26 numbers. So let's say A Z, and that is 395 in base 36. That's a fun fact. So basically it just uses the standard convention of pass base 10, Yeah, you use the letters A through Z as numbers. So we could say ZZ and we get 1295. Uh, the next function is to string, basically it does the exact opposite. It takes a number, or it takes really any value and converts it to a string. Most functions that uh, print things to some kind of stream like error or print io.write or actually io.write doesn't do it, but error and print, any of the kind of higher level uh, output functions, they all call toString on each one of their arguments. So you see we give error a number, but that has toString called on it, and then that's converted into a string. And you can't really see that 11 is being converted to a string here. Uh, if we gave it a boolean value, then it prints out true, but true is actually being treated as the string that says true, so it's it's being treated like this, not as an actual boolean value. Uh, and in most languages, if you uh, called a two-string function on a boolean, it would be printed out as one. But Lua actually prints out boolean values as their uh, true/false. The word true or false. The next function we've probably gone over this in a very early tutorial. It's called type, and it just gives you the type of the uh, value you give into it the value give it as a parameter as a string so here you can see we get number if we gave it a boolean we get boolean 
we give it a string, we get string, and so on. You can also do it with coroutines, that gives thread, user data from C gives you user data, and pretty much any value in Lua, it will print out the type of that as a string. And this last thing, you can see it's not a function, it's actually a constant, underscore version. This gives you the version of Lua that you're using as a string, so you can see we're using Lua 5.2. And if you're using Lua 5.1, obviously it'll print out 5.1, and if you somehow gotten Lua 5.3 to work, uh, first of all, tell me how to do it, and second of all, it will print out Lua 5.3. So that's all for this tutorial. Uh, I actually did that all in one take. I think that's the first time since the math library video from the original series, so kudos to me. And uh, that's actually also all for the pure Lua portion of this series. So um, I said before that after this I'd be moving on to the C library, but I looked yesterday and there are so few things that have changed in the C API, which is the same thing as the C library between Lua 5.1 and Lua 5.2, it's really not worth even making a video on it, let alone redoing the entire like series of, I think it was six videos that I already had. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm just going to leave those videos up because I watched them all over and they're not atrociously bad. They're actually, in my opinion, pretty good. Uh, by atrociously bad, I'm referring to the first few video, first few videos of the original Lua series. Uh, those videos were actually why I redid the entire thing. But yeah, once I got to the C library, I was good enough at doing this that uh, they're still watchable. So I'm going to leave those. I'm not going to redo the entire series, and then I'll just move on from where I left off. So uh, you now have six videos to watch for homework between now and the next video. So I'll see you then.